So in a prior video, we looked at the development of the formula for tell, which was Mg3 Si4O10 OH2. So we're going to do something a little bit different here. What if instead of silica in this fourfold coordinated site, what if we were to put in some aluminum? Now aluminum can also go into the fourfold site, but it has a three plus charge instead of the typical four plus charge that we have on silica. We would lose a charge, so we would have Mg3, and then we'll write Al Si3 O10 OH2. Now, if this fellow over here is neutral, and it should be, then this fellow here should have a negative one charge because we've pulled out, let's just put this in square brackets. We have this structural unit here, right? The Si4O10, if we cut that in half, that is our familiar Si205 layers. Uh, these would have a two minus charge. If we have twice that amount, then we would have a four minus charge there. These are our tetrahedral layers. So here we still have the tetrahedral layer, but we've pulled out a positive charge. The way we would gain it back is we could add a potassium atom here. And if we did that, then we would have the mineral phlogopite. And if we exchange some of the magnesium for iron, then we could get the mineral biotite. So phlogopite is a case where we've put in some aluminum into the tetrahedrally coordinated site uh, in place of silicon. And if we replace, let's say, one out of four of the silicon, so one fourth of uh, all silicon atoms are replaced with aluminum, then we would have room to put in one potassium per formula unit the way we've written it here. Uh, and then the pure magnesium case, again, is phlogopite add in some iron solid solution and we would have biotite. Uh, let's look at one of the variation we can have instead of talc as our starting composition. We could start out with prophylite. So we still have the Si4O10OH2 parts. It's the uh, substitution of mag uh, aluminum for magnesium that gives us per the prophylite structure instead of talc but we could play the same kind of game. Instead of four silicons, let's say that in this structural unit here, we instead have one out of four silicons replaced by aluminum. So we would have AlSi3O10 and then OH2, and then we'll have this aluminum two, uh, two aluminums here sitting in octahedral coordination. Again, we'll put in potassium to satisfy the charge that we lost in putting in an aluminum. And this fellow is muscovite. Let's write that a little bit more neatly. So this is the mineral muscovite. Uh, and as a final variation on a theme, instead of replacing just one out of four aluminums, we could replace two out of, uh, excuse me, having one out of four silicons uh, replaced by aluminum. Uh, what if we replace two of four silicons with aluminum? Then in that case, we would have four, uh, well, leave the Mg there, we would have Mg uh, Al2 Si2 O10. I'll uh, we'll use square brackets that indicates our tetrahedral layer, OH2. Now we've lost two charges. We can put in a calcium and we can also play the same game with aluminum. So we can have Ca Al2 and then Al2 Si2 O10 and then OH2. And these would give us the minerals clintonite and margerite. Uh, for the case of putting in two aluminums here, notice that these aluminums are in fourfold coordination and these fellows are in sixfold coordination. That's why we write the aluminums twice. I'll have to admit that when I was a beginning student, that confused me quite a bit. Why don't we just collapse all these and just call them CaAl4 Si two O ten O H two. Doesn't that make it a little bit easier? Makes it a little bit easier to memorize. That's for sure when you're a beginning mineralogy student.
But the reason for separating them here is because we're noting that the aluminums belong to two different structural sites. These aluminums here are part of the tetrahedral layer, and these two aluminums here are in the octahedral layer, uh, coordinated to six oxygens instead of four for those aluminums there. So that's a case. Um, this is the case for how we uh, build up the micas. These are called the brittle micas. We're adding this two plus charge. Uh, calcium is an interlayer cation. Let's go back and sum up here. So for phlogopite and muscovite and biotite, potassium one plus is the interlayer cation. So this is the interlayer cation. The way you can think of it is we have a TOT layer and then instead of van der Waals bonds, we can have a large potassium there that bonds it to the next TOT layer. And then in the case of, uh, let's say, clintonite, we have a calcium ion that is uh, situated on the interlayer site. So we have a TOT la uh, layer. Here's the inter interlayer site. Uh, and then another TOT triplet. And we're going to put a calcium atom there, which has a 2 plus charge. With a little bit greater of a charge, this triplet here is a little bit more strongly bonded to this fellow here. So the fellows with calcium as an interlayer cation are usually referred to as the brittle micas. They're a little more brittle, a little weaker than, let's say, the regular micas that have potassium or sodium on the interlayer site. That's one last chemical variation that we didn't discuss. If we take a look again at muscovite, muscovite was KAL2 and then AL2 again, Si2O10, and then OH2. Another very important kind of substitution is putting sodium 1 plus instead of uh, potassium 1 plus on that interlayer site. And if we do that, then we would have the mineral aragonite. So those are our micas. <clears throat>